Or if you don't have shorts, some tights will do as well because then at least they slip contours around your hip and thigh region. Anyone think? Really? Do you want to ask you to go shoes? Yeah. Yeah. Can leave the socks on. It's a bit cold today. Yeah. But this morning I was um, going to my car and because there's a slope toward my um, garage, because I was there as a short <coughs> garage, I was, my, me and my children were slipping and doing sledging while I was going there. And then he got cut. But it's okay. Now, <laughs> so the very first thing, just sit there. The very first test that we're going to look at is the Thomas test. Okay. The Thomas test is a very common test that um, looks at, I mean, the original function of the Thomas test is to test for the tightness of the iliopsoas. The iliopsoas consists of mainly three muscles, the iliacus, the psoas major, and the psoas minor. It is, these, these three muscles form the flexor, hip flexor group. So essentially, hip flexion is like this. Now, <coughs> if they're tight, what will happen obviously is that because of these it's uh, attachments to the um, L5, some of the lumbar spine, on the iliac crest, on, on the pelvis itself, on the iliacus, and onto the femur. Yeah? If it was tight, then the angle that you, is formed by the hip, obviously it won't be full. It will be restricted. So imagine this is the, this is the hip, oh, no, sorry, this is the uh, lumbar spine and the and the uh, pelvis. This is the femur. The, <coughs> as a representation, this is the flexor group, the hip flexor group. If it was okay in terms of length, then both of them can straighten out. So 180 degrees or perhaps slightly more. But if it's tight, then what will happen is that if you increase this, this will pull that along because the tightness will just simply pull along. Okay, so that's the principle of the Thomas test. Now there are different ways to do the Thomas test. The one that we show, we have actually given you in the video is quite a simple one. So what we do is we ask the uh, uh, person to actually lie down flat on the bed. Okay? And then what we do is we ask the person to hold on and bring the knees to the chest on the unaffected side. So let's say for example, if we suspect that it's the right side that is affected, we ask them to can you now bring your knees towards your chest and hold on to it, <coughs> okay? Now, what we're looking for is whether there is an arch at the back here. It needs to remain flat. The reason why we're looking for arch is because sometimes patients compensate in terms of tightness by arching the back. Because if you arch the back, then what happens is it brings the um, attachments which is located on the pelvis forwards to relieve the tightness of the hip flexors. Yeah? However, if they don't compensate with the increased lordosis or a slightly anterior pelvic tilt, which is the pelvis moving forwards to relieve the strain of the hip flexors, what happens is that if everything is flat and that's perfectly fine, then if there is tightness of the hip flexors, it will bring the femur up that way. And therefore, you will see that there is a space. So, if let's say, for example, if she has a tightness which she doesn't, if she has a tightness, what will happen is that the space will increase to that, or slightly less, depending on how tight, obviously, it is. You got that? Okay. Now, this version of the Thomas test is purely to test for the hip flexors. There are different versions you can see out there, and, I, and I, I've seen people doing different things um, to also test other aspects of the um, um, other um, mu muscle groups within the um, thigh region as well. For example, one other uh, muscle, which is, is part of the quadriceps uh, muscle group, actually also helps with hip flexion because of its attachment that traverses across the hip which is the rectus femoris, which is part of the quadriceps group. Okay? The distal attachment is on the patella itself. Now, if that is tight, what will happen is that will obviously contribute towards whatever we just observed. But, because of the distal attachment onto the patella itself, it will also cause the knee to actually extend. Because if it's attached to that, if it's tight, then it will pull, obviously pull the knee up. 
extended. Normally, a person is able to achieve 90 degrees if there is no tightness of the rectus femoris. However, if someone has got tightness, then that will bring it beyond 80 degrees. Anything that is more than uh, that is less than 80 degrees, which means that it goes up. Okay, this is 90, this is 80. Anything like that, we said there is a potential tightness of the rectus femoris. You got that? So how would we test that? Simple. What we do is, can you get you to sit up? Okay, now when you sit over the edge of the bed, over here, put your bum over here, a bit further on. Okay, now, what I want you to do is, I want you to bring, in, it's still the right side we are interested in, so I want you to bring your left knee towards the chest, and then I want you now to slowly lie back down. And as she goes down, I want you to relax the other leg. Relax. Yeah, that's right. And just there, I'll bring the pillow behind you. Now, and then we can see whether there is a tightness. Okay? Now I want you to there. check again, similarly, whether there's an increase in the a slight increase. And can you relax that? Yeah. You see, Kat? That wasn't because she's got tightness of rack fam. I can see that she's actually actively trying to hold it there. She's just afraid, okay, because she doesn't trust me. <laughs> um, so I'll need you to just relax. If you want to double confirm whether she really has a rectus femoris tightness, what you do is, can you hold on to that? Help her a bit by holding on to there, and simply use your knee or use your hands to tighten that, and then palpate for the rectus femoris there to see whether the rectus fan pops up and then whether she complains of very tight or pain <coughs> in the rectus fan, which confirms your um, assessment that she might have a rectus femoris. Got it? Cool. Now, she's got a very good example of potentially of someone having a tight tensor fasciolata or the iliotable band. Because when we do that, what will happen is that the uh, uh, if you see that there is a slight abduction of the thigh across there, then that means that the, um, the femur is moving out in order to relieve the tension due to the tightness of the iliotibial band. Now, iliotibial band, we know that the distal attachment has got <coughs> onto the tibia, okay, as well as on the condyle femur. But as it goes up on the side, this tight fascial band that goes up on the side, and then it's a and then there are um, there are actually there is one main muscle which is the tensor fasciolata which controls it. It's possible to control it, and it, the tensor fasciolata attaches itself onto the iliac. Okay, so if there is a tightness, similarly a bit like a tightly strung rope, it will actually pull it out, which <coughs> is slightly pulled out. Okay, so which means potentially got a little tightness of the little Got it. So that's the first test, Thomas test. Would you mind continuing uh, being my model for the next test? Okay, good. Now if you go all the way back. The next one is called the Faber's test, or Patrick's test. Remember as Faber, not because it was invented by a guy called Faber, but because of the movement that is um, contributing, <coughs> the hip movement that's contributing towards this particular um, test. So Faber's test for flexion, Abduction, external rotation, F, A, B, yaw. Got that? So, let's just follow the, um, let's just follow what the um, name tells us. So, we need firstly to flex the hip, and then we need to extern, uh, abduct the hip, and then we need to externally rotate the hip. So, if we follow those, what do we get? Do we get a figure of four? And there is, this is also called, okay, just relax for me. You got a tight, yeah. you got a tight little tubal band. Okay, okay, relax. Okay, just hold it there. This has become a figure of four. Okay, you might have put yourself in that position when you're trying to read on the sofa. Okay, I often do that. Okay, because when I do that, when I'm sitting down, I just need to lie back and then I turn into that. So, now, this is not the end of the test. The test itself, is to look at whether there are any hip issues, hip joint issues. When you put the um, lower limb in that position, what it does is that it actually causes a quite close compression of the hip joint. Okay, what you're doing is you're tightening up all the structures within the hip joint itself. Don't 
The way to stress test and complete this test is by stabilizing the anterior superior iliac spine on the opposite side, the contralateral side, the good, uh, the good side, which we know that is this here. For the second class that hasn't done this, don't worry about it. But there is a bony point, the highest bony point on your pelvis over here. As you can see, <coughs> for those of you who are actually quite level here, you can see that her entire pelvis is actually tilted sideways. So all we need to do is we need to help stabilize that and hold it there. Okay? And then what we need to do is simply do a gentle compression downward. So just on the knee, just simply put it as far as you can go. Okay? Is there any pain that you're experiencing? Okay, besides that, because my hands are very bony, I don't have very much. What I need to do is get a towel. Get a towel or a pillow, just give it to me. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> that will help. Okay, <coughs> and I got a nice padded pen. Okay, is that better? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tough customers. <laughs> <laughs> but by the way, this angle needs to be above the knee, uh, the patella. Uh, the, uh, the, the so you do that and then you push down. Do you feel pain? No. I wouldn't expect her to. But, do you feel any tightness anywhere? Yeah, she's got <coughs> probably slightly tight either um, adductors or uh, if you feel, if the person complains of pain in the hip, that means that, 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 that there might be a suspicion that there might be a hip issue. Okay? Now, sometimes, because of the way you've Added the, uh, you've, added, you've added a stress onto the hip joint. When, it, when, it, when you push that down, it essentially screws and then screws into the hip joint and then tilts it. So that what happens is this is the lumbar spine. It articulates with your hip bone over there. And what it does is it actually pushes it in. So that it also can be a partial test of a sacroiliac joint as well. So if someone complains when you do that stress <coughs> movement and someone complains, or pain in the lower back around where the sacral iliac spine is, potentially there is a compression there and you know that you might have to start looking at the sacral iliac spine. Got that? Sometimes, potentially, you might also hear someone complaining of the lower back as well. Now the very first thing is if someone's complaining of the lower back, you need to double check if you're positioning them appropriately. <coughs> Sometimes it's because the positioning is not right and therefore they're arching and therefore you're stressing the lumbar spine inappropriately, but if everything's okay, then potentially that you might be actually looking at a um, lumbar issue as well, lower lumbar issue, okay, that <coughs> you may have to check, double check to see what's going on, okay. Now this test is fairly generic, the sensitivity is fairly low, so it's only as a <coughs> roughly which area is that, a, which particular joint and then you then you use much more specific tests to actually go zoom in or you do specific moves or check the active range of motion just to make sure. So that's Faber's test. You got that? Good. Right. The next one I can get you to get up. Okay? I can get you to take off the socks now if you don't want. <coughs> just stand here for a moment whilst I raise the bed. The next, the last test is the Trent Dallenberg's test, is to test for weakness of the hip, flat, uh, hip abductor, okay, more specifically gluteus medius. Now gluteus medius, because of its attachment onto the iliac, uh, uh, onto the iliac bone, as well as onto the uh, greater tuberosity, what it does is, when it's positioned, it abducts the hip or abducts the femur. Now, one, how, what does the Trend uh, how does the Trendelenburg's test test for the weakness of the hip ab, uh, hip abductor in particular the glute uh, glute med? Is that um, if we were to get someone to have an open chain, which means that there is no support, the pelvis is less hanging left hanging in the air then the hip adductors, in order to stabilize the hip, imagine the, these are the two um, pelvic bones forming the pelvis, uh, forming the pelvis. 
the uh, if it's hanging in the air, then what you should do is the hip abductor should hold it such that it's level to the ground. If, however, one side is weaker, then it will let it go like that. Okay. So how do we do that in principle on someone like that? So what they do is, I want you to now put your hands on the uh, on the things that are on the plane of support. Now, if you want to let's say test the right lower limb, then what we do is get a person to just simply bend your knee and raise up and just stand on your left leg. Probably. Okay, don't need to be so high, just relax and just simply raise it like that will do. Okay, and then what you want to do is go to the back of the person and double check the, uh, the elect crest right there to make sure that it's level. If the person has got um, right uh, uh, glute meat weakness, then what will happen is you think you can let that down. So I'll tilt this downwards, which is not very good at doing a very good job of that, but it's okay. Let me demonstrate to you, thank you. Let me demonstrate to you how it would look like. Okay, so this is okay. If someone's got glute meat, so I relax my glute meat, this is what happens. Okay, this is weakness. You can see that this pelvic, uh, the elect crest here, that this level is much lower than the other level over there. Okay, so the person will be simply doing this. They won't even do like that and then do that. So they just simply do that. Because they, 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 they can't hold. The, the glute meat is so weak that it can't actually hold on and level it up. <coughs> Got that? Okay. And because of that, it has got implications when for walking. If someone's walking, when we actually swing through, there is a slight abduction <coughs> in order to bring it across, in order to clear. Okay. Or when someone's in stance, they will obviously, because the other leg is free hanging, okay, might be weaker. So what will happen is that in, in order to clear the leg, they might actually do a much more swinging thing like that. I'm actually exaggerating a bit, okay. But they will actually try to clear by bending the knee and trying to do a much more circular motion in order to clear the foot in order to step forwards. Those are the three tests we're doing today. Do you have any questions for me before we carry on? Was that clear enough? Good. Can I now break up into the into two rooms and I'll come and help you? Okay, thank you very much.